this isn't going to be a recommended um, item, even though it's under the recommended item sections. It's there because I got nowhere else to go there. I just wanted to kind of talk about um, because this is all things base, right? Um, I'll talk about a really cool unicorn item that I found, which is a um, Squire Precision Base that came with a from the factory with a jazz width neck and apparently for a couple of years they did that um i don't know the full backstory i think i can pretty much guess um why they did it which would be to um they figure their target audience was kids younger players beginning players and therefore if we give them a thinner neck that will make it easier for them to play as a beginner and the reason I think that is because that's exactly what Sterling by Music Man did when they came out with theirs, right? They took the same thought and philosophy and they openly discuss that that was their thought and philosophy for why their clone of their Music Man Stingray um, on the entry level one has a thinner neck. When I didn't realize that till after the fact, but that's why that has a thinner neck than the professional $2,000 line. Um, so... Now I've got my thin neck that I personally prefer on a precision base. I can't pass this up. I'd read about these before, you know, when complaining about these. Somebody says, yeah, well, for two years there, they did make them. I think the reason they switched them back is that um, precision base fans know what they like. They're very fanatical about their love of the precision base. And when they pick up a precision base, they expect to find a chunkier neck on it. Um, and that is what they know. That is what they like. That is what they love. Especially, um, and for some people that need, if they have really long, long fingers, um, which I don't, um, the thicker, chunkier neck helps them. Um, so this doesn't have that, which to me is awesome and why I want it. Um, so, and I'm even sort of considering maybe giving it to my niece as a Christmas or birthday present, but I end up keeping it for myself. And here's why. When I bought it, um, I knew it had some flaws and I knew she wouldn't appreciate those flaws, such as... Um, you know, some scraping on the back, including what looked like a screwdriver mark on the back, um, as well as, you know, a kidney-shaped um, real ugly spot where the finish had worn down on the neck, and now it's dark stained um, because of that. And the metal and stuff starting to show its age. So just a little too old, a little too used, a little too pawn shoppy for her. Um, so I'm going to keep it because I actually appreciate the whole road-worn look thing. So now you see where I'm going and a lot of you going, oh, no, please tell me you didn't. Well, I did. Um, so let's go ahead and switch over to that picture. A little close up. This is the end product. So I, not only did I try to go road worn with it, but I asked myself if when I was 12 years old, when I begged mom and dad to get me a bass, if they hadn't said, hell no, you're going to learn how to play the piano, what bass would I have gotten? Well, it would have been a Squire. It would have been a Precision because I was totally, totally into punk rock and new wave, and but largely punk rock. As a little skater punk kid, really just you know, big time skater punk kid, shaved head, uh, with the bangs hanging down to my chin, and you know, total attitude and everything. A little obnoxious little kid. Um, as were all my friends and my obnoxious, opinionated friends that were just like me, but actually knew a little tiny bit of something about the bass. All screamed go get a precision that, you know, and when I looked and researched and the guys I liked, when I looked at pictures of them, you know, what were they holding? They were holding a precision base. So another issue that I had was that the pickups, while they had that Fender twang that I love, um, that very punk rocky, you know, distinct character that you get from a Fender precision base, they were dull, which you expected, of course, and they had very, very, you know, for the price point, they had very, very limited range that you'd expect for the price point. Um, but the issue was they were hot and cold and they were very hummy, a lot, you know, hum noise going. So I figure short, right? So I take it apart and start looking for a short in the wires. Can't find them. So the next thing I think is shielding. Well, I've got it taken apart. Um, and, um, I'm thinking, well, you know, I'm going to replace the shielding. So I order off of eBay, this really thick copper shielding tape, um, I watch a couple of videos just to make sure that what I think is what it's supposed to be is what it's supposed to be. Confirm that's the case on how to do it. Do it and make sure, you know, as far as where tape isn't supposed to be. Uh, make sure I remove all everywhere it's not supposed to be. Make sure it is everywhere it is supposed to be. Put it all back together. Hum is almost completely gone. Um, you know, you never totally get rid of it with the really cheap pickups. Um, but most, you know, almost totally gone. 
with the hot and cold feature where one minute is super hot and so much so it might cut out um, to um, other minutes is really low and now you're, you know, you just can't get enough volume out of them um, and really couldn't track down where that was. I just figured largely could just be the age of the pickups, could be the age of the wiring harness, but let's start with pickups. So I order those um, and those are on their way from eBay. So while they're on the way from eBay, the body is still got this hard, hard plastic finish um, that's super glossy in parts and just ugly in others because of just the natural wear of the age. So to get this stuff off there, it's not coming off sandpaper. There's just no way. So I initially start with a screwdriver. You're thinking, screwdriver, really? You just complain there was a screwdriver mark in the back. Yeah, I initially start with a screwdriver. That doesn't work so well. So I grab one of my... Um, tactical folding knives that I own um, with a really sharp finish that's, you know, no way you can damage that thing. It's, it's just made so well. And then I use that to just scrape away. And that actually works. I'm able, with a little bit of force and, you know, very risky proposition though, I'm being as careful as I can. I'm scraping away the finish in the areas I don't want. But in the process, I'm scratching the hell out of, um, you know, thin line scratch marks all over parts of the edges where I want to keep the finish. So I'm thinking I've ruined this thing, right? Well, turns out those were just surface deep, those scratches. And when I take just a ton of steel, well, way more than I thought, and then some rubbing compound, and then realize, no, I'm not ready for rubbing compound. I got to do more steel wool. Um, and then with that, tons of rubbing compound. Um, and then the biggest thing that helped when I was all said and done, because I still thought there's just way too many scuffs and swirls and everything there's no way this is going to look good when i apply teak oil to it those um swirls and stuff just go away just completely go away um and the more i put on there the better and so and then as it ages it gets just even better i'm thinking i'll put more on you know teak oil on because i do like this shine that you see here that you get from it um, and, and it feels nice against the skin um, you don't want so much oil on there that it's rubbing off in your skin every time you touch it and now you're getting oil everywhere um, you can get that wiped off enough um, to where that doesn't happen but still feels really nice to the skin um, and i'd love to get that back again i'm just too lazy um, it's messy you know i don't want to lay down plastic and everything that i need to do to do that a glove up all that stuff um, so now i'm trying to take shoe polish to, as, as so many people did, and coffee and stuff like that to, um, and I didn't do the dip in coffee thing, I just, I thought about it, I ended up just doing the shoe polish thing to try to make the pit guard look aged, and it just looks terrible. So of course I clean all of that off with um, spirits um, and um, get all that off there, so, and try to clean it up as best I can, but it's still ugly, right? So I decide, well, you know, skater, skater punk theme base, what did I do to my binder when I was in junior high? I completely covered it with skater stickers. So, okay, let's try that on the pick guard, you know? Um, so I go to eBay, I order a bunch of stickers that I like. I actually get them in packs that came with some I didn't like, but had the brands of products that I actually used and owned, as well as some, and then they also sell a punk rock thing that contained band names, stickers of bands that I absolutely love and listen to this day, but listen to at the same time. You can see Sex Pistols on there, Clash. Um, I think there's some others underneath. Um, Dead Kennedys is in there somewhere. Um, so, and then I take an X-Acto knife and I get a nice clean edge when I'm all done, carefully laying out my pattern of stickers. Um, put a nice clean line around the outside edge of the pick guards now right where the slope of it changes which is very easy to do, believe it or not. Um, and um, I thought it was going to be a hassle. It turned out easy. And so now I've got my pick guard all lined out. And right about now, my Seymour Duncan um, pickup show up. Problem is, the wiring harness, um, the schematics that I've got, my wiring harness doesn't match it even remotely. And I didn't take a picture of what it looked like. And, you know, beforehand, like I should have. Um, and even worse, um, you know, the wires it's missing an actual wire that you would need to wire it the way it came and i'm also thinking you know these posts could be bad this could be where i'm running into why it's hot and cold um, and having you know issues electronically so i buckle down and i order a um and pay for expedited shipping and get a um 70s style um 
custom made wiring harness from a guy with awesome reviews um, that someone else I had read about in a forum recommended and went to his eBay store, even though I'm a big eBay guy. Um, and should, you know, normally would just search. Um, I actually made sure that the guy's stuff is awesome. I'm sorry, I don't know his name. I would say his username, I'd say it here. Um, but what I liked about the 70 stuff versus, you know, brand new and packaged stuff, the brand new and packaged stuff had the cheap thin wires, just like the, you know, cheapy Squire one, these old fashioned seventies one, you know, have these wrapped, you know, cloth wrapped, awesome, nice, thick wiring. So I researched what, you know, solder I need to do it for the correct one for doing this. Didn't have any trouble finding that. Um, and I soldered it all back together. Instant problem, disappointment, that problem. That twang that I love about Fender Precision Bases, gone. No matter how I adjust this knob, can't get it back. Get close, can't get it, right? Um, so that's heartbreaking because the whole reason I like Precision Bases is that twang. The more I play it, however, and no one says in the Seymour Duncan Quarter Pounder reviews, oh, by the way, the character you know, that is typically associated with a Precision Base, that's going to be gone. Um, but what was true in the reviews, and I read just dozens of them, is that the sound that you get, and I've appreciated it more and more the more I play it, is just gorgeous. Studio quality, gorgeous sound coming out of a Squire. So now I've got, you know, 300 bucks invested in this pawn shop Squire, at least. Um, but it sounds like something much, much more expensive. Sounds, you know, really really nice maybe not you know nowhere as nice as my two thousand dollar music man um not as nice as my you know what should have been thirteen hundred dollar road worn jazz i got it on sale got it used um got it for you know what you pay for, got it for about 650 which is like half what you should pay for it um it doesn't sound as nice as it um but sounds gorgeous sounds so much better than a squire um so that is my skater punk unicorn project of a base that I got for $100 and then poured another 200 at least uh, into it. Um, so anyhow, feel free to tell me how much you think this was just a terrible idea and it looks ugly. Uh, if you think it's awesome, thank you and uh, feel free to say so. Let me know if you happen to have one of these rare unicorn ones with a uh, jazz neck on it. Uh, let me know if you think that is the stupidest idea on earth and it's awesome that they decided to stop doing so. You know, comment away. Please like, share, subscribe. All three help us considerably.